We want to welcome everybody. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is October 31. No, it's not October 31. I was kidding. 14th November. How about 14th of November, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time? Should we start over? No, we're not going to start over. <laughs> this is the journey, which is our time of the week for discipleship. Oh, dear God. I hope. <laughs> this is the you. journey, Fred. This is the journey. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you Amen. for bringing us so clearly to us. Thank Let's you so much. Give the double oh, portion. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Stop laughing. It's serious. The joy of the Lord is All our right. strength. Okay. All right. Let's start over again. We want to welcome you, everybody. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is November 14th, 2022, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. And this is the journey, which is our time of the week for discipleship. We are going through the book Ecclesia Rising by Dean Briggs. And uh, this week we are talking about, we're going through the chapter on, um, oh dear, good, my goodness, where are we? The chapter symphony on of symphony of prayer. Yep. Here we are. We're in the right place now. Um, and uh, it's a. It was a great chapter. So what we're going to do is, uh, we'll have to open up in prayer, and then we will. Susan and I are just going to kind of go through the chapter somewhat conversationally, and then we'll um, we'll take your comments and suggestions. We'd like to have some time of prayer at the end. So um, let us have, uh, let's have Molly, Miss Molly Joshi, Joshi, would you please unmute yourself and uh, just uh, pray us into this time. Pray for Susan and me too, would you please? Because we're, wow, we need it bad. <laughs> Father God, we just want to bless you and thank you for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that you have gathered us as Ecclesia. And Father, we thank you for Dr. Fred and Sue right now. We thank you for their love for you and for the kingdom. And we thank you for this hour that you have given us to come together as global watchmen, to sit at your feet, to hear from what you are speaking to your son and speaking to us through this book of the harmony that needs to come. And of course, Father, what would the enemy try to do to bring disarray and, and disharmony? But Father, we thank you. We're going to sound as one. They're going to sound beautiful because you are setting forth the harmony. You are bringing forth your prayers through the hearts. Father, we thank you by the, by the blood of the Lamb of God. We secure this prayer time with the blood of Jesus all around Dr. Fred and Sue, and through all the airwaves and sound waves and, and uh, the computer systems, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the wall of fire and the hedge of protection and the bloodline of Jesus around us. And Lord, Holy Spirit, the conductor of all of this, bring forth those, that harmony that we and revelation of Jesus that we need in this hour to come together and to declare and decree and to pray as you taught us to pray. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the angels who are assigned and who will watch over this gate of prayer and mountain of prayer in Yeshua's name we ask and pray, amen. Amen, thank you so much, Molly. All right, Susan, um, you were going to uh, start off and give us a little introduction and then we're gonna talk through the the six instruments of the symphony of prayer. Yeah, um, we're going to just briefly go over things to help us orient our, our heads uh, around this chapter. Um, it may be that we may need another week or two on this chapter, uh, but I, I, it was such a, the goodness of God to land us on this, this um, focus, the symphony of prayer and the six topics that he brings out this week with all the things that are going on with COP27 and the 10 commandment issues in Egypt. 
and how we can go about and effectually war uh, as an ecclesia. The uh, six points that he brings up are vital. And uh, Fred, I don't know about you, but uh, well, we'll bring it up in the discussion. The the issues that he talks about are everything that we've been fighting for in, in establishing the watch. Absolutely. And um, that it just was a lot of confirmation for us. And I hope we will have laughter and we, hopefully we will have some great points for all of us to take home and kind of grab hold of uh, as, as we are actually forming in the Ecclesia. And um, after reading this chapter, I've had a respect for it, uh, Ecclesia, as a difference in terms of what we experience in our church environments. The Ecclesia, I'm holding with the uh, very significant fear of the Lord after reading this. And um, I hope that comes across not as a heavy weight, but as a, uh, I feel um, humbled that God would call us into this. And I pray that we can learn and move in this direction to become that mighty force that's going to be needed in the hour that we're in. And we are in that hour right now this week. Um, but uh, there will be more to come. And I hope that this discussion seeds our spirit for the, fu the future. Yep. Amen. So you want to go through? Let's but, just... Well, let's just review some of the stuff just briefly, but I'd like to hear from you, the, some of you comments that really struck you so that we get this discussion going. You can read something, but when you hear it and you discuss it, it kind of, it sinks in a whole lot more. Okay. So you can start. Okay. So let's just start. We're just going to go through, uh, well, first of all, the, the, the um, intro. And... Yeah. So, very, you know, at the very beginning, he says about the symphony of prayer that the ecclesia needs to be a community of prayer uh, and in holiness and love, or it cannot be an ecclesia. And we have worked so hard at uh, in the Global Watch to try to build a community. Um, and, you know, even before this book, and, and, and so this book, and particularly this chapter, is just confirming what I think the Lord is doing through this group, which is that he's, we're building a community, we're building a family, and uh, that that is so important in walking in the authority that we have as the ecclesia. So wouldn't you agree, dear? Uh, yeah, and I, what struck me in, in the sort of the whole intro of this is the, the link between Matthew 16 and the discussion at Caesarea Philippi, <clears throat> and also Matthew 18, and the intensity of binding and loosing and the power of that. And he says, the key portions of Matthew chapters 16 and 18 reveal not only the authority of Christ in his ecclesia, but healthy modes of interaction necessary to net sustain the mandate of prayer. And that mm -hmm. is... Uh, Interestingly, I want everybody to know that Matthew 18 is one of the key um, scriptures that we focus on, that we focus on in the core values of the Global Watch. Why? Because we want to secure a safe place for everybody to land and that we have good protocol, biblical protocol in dealing with each other. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's not funny, actually. It's actually a, a very important thing for the, the betrayal culture that's coming uh, upon us right now, actually. Yeah, but the, you know, the, the, the great thing is that when we're, as we're doing this and as we're praying together, God has and is supernaturally knitting our hearts to each other. And, um, and it's just, it's a wonderful, it's an incredible thing. And that in and of itself is great, but the fact that it also, adds to the authority that we'll we have as the mm -hmm. ecclesia is just mm -hmm. so important so let's uh go to uh no, there were six instruments he's talking about in the symphony of prayer and symphony what he's saying is that the root word of symphony means harmonious so mm -hmm. it's all about being harmonious in prayer so the symphony of unity um his main point i think is that um 
our personal relationships as brothers and sisters need to be, um, we need to be very uh, careful about that. We need to deal in love and forgiveness with each other. Um, he said miscommunication and wounds are inevitable that they're going to happen, but we need to be, you know, slow to anger and quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. And we need to be uh, a people who really bless each other and, uh, and, and really um, have God's heart one, one to another. Mm -hmm. We have God's heart for each other that we really want to see each of us individually uh, and corporately walking in the fullness of everything that God's called us to be. Amen. Do you have anything that you want to add to that, dear? Well, um, that that was really good. I, I I just wanted to reiterate on, he actually says this, and I, I want you to know that we've, we've been speaking this all along. Page 190, that the ecclesial security measures of Matthew 18 are not meant to intimidate us, but to create a secure environment. And we are committed to that. And yeah. I, I would encourage everybody just to look that over again. We all, we often hear about, um, uh, what is it? Uh, if two or more agree together, I, you know, I'll give you whatever you ask for, but, um, wait a minute. <laughs> There's a process in Matthew 18 that he goes through first to get us to that point of covenant agreement and and then we can declare and God answers. So right, and the process is operating in loving, uh -huh. uh, forgiving, um, blessing type relationships with each other. And that scripture parallels. Get this to what God, uh, Jesus was saying in Caesarea Philippi at the gates of hell. So guess what? Where the uh, warfare is, it's between our us and our our. Yeah. Un, our agreements and our our you know how we work things through and that's what this whole chapter is about and uh we are very fervent about this because that's where covenant comes in alignment and boy i i remember the things that i've done with two or three where we've had these like, powerful encounters with god and we've seen powerful responses and if I go back to the stadium events that I've been to that we all get hooped out about, I don't remember much. And maybe it's just me, but, um, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. Uh, they're, we need both, the large, but we under, need to understand we should not be intimidated because of our size. Yeah, well, that's absolutely Well, I true. guess that's one of his points too. So. Right, that right. So, but, you know, uh, in this in this first, uh, the symphony of unity one of the things that he says is um when we agree together we stand in covenant and covenant releases favor mm. wow that is really that's really powerful and uh and we need to this is the importance of agreement so let's um let's go on to number two which is the symphony of purity you have something that you want to just say about this yeah, I I was really struck by this. I guess it's partly because of my own journey and the purifying process God has taken me through. But um, he says on page 192, the authority invested in the ecclesia is not to be trifled with. If I remember anything about this chapter, this part of the chapter, I want to remember that. I, I feel like this purity thing is a thing that um, really gave me the fear of the Lord. So, okay. So what, but what is that? What is, what does purity have to do with the authority not to be trifled with? Um, well, it, in, it, he says in 193, if we <laughs> understand that the authority of the group derives from uh, Christ and the covenantal into integrity of the members, we are free within the Holy Spirit's guidance to pick a fight. Yeah, that's very powerful. I, I mean, I, I mean, the the whole thing that he's saying here is that the group dynamic, um, as we're operating as a, as a group, we have to operate with integrity and wholeness. We can't mm -hmm. operate with with deception or sin issues in ourselves individually or between each other. And uh, and if we do that, we're going to operate in great authority. And he says in on page one ninety two. 
that the ecclesia can't really truly rule if we're compromised from within. Yeah, <coughs> that, and that's a very so, big deal. And that, for me, that brings the fear of the Lord uh, to me because I feel like, Lord, I've got to operate. I've got to, everything that I am in, in secret needs to be the same as I am in, in public. Well, he summarizes it, that rulership amidst the counsel of God is a high and holy privilege. And the lives of those who seek such an office should be characterized by brokenness, humility, and submission to the Lord. Grieve to think that they might grieve the Holy Spirit, quick to relinquish sin and growing in holiness. Yeah. Amen. I know whenever I'm in a hot spot, you know what? Uh, my prayer has increased. Well, it's really increasingly begun, become, Lord, how do I stand before you in this situation? and be right with you. And that helps me weed through a lot of work. Yeah, amen, amen. All right, let's go on to um, the symphony of two or three. You were starting to talk about this just a couple of minutes ago. And um, I think that the, the key, to me, the key statement in this uh, section was his statement that he said, the most liberating and danger, liberating for us and dangerous fact for the enemy is that the authority of the ecclesia is invested in groups as small as two or three. And I think that that's, that is something that is just so completely counterintuitive. And it's just, um, it's just, you, you know, you just look at it and you go, what is that for real? But it is, but it's true that there's, I would rather be in a group of two or three where we are in one accord and we're in agreement than I would in with 10 where we have a number of different Discord, opinions. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe that there's hardly any authority that comes from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've just got to remember that numbers in and of itself doesn't help. Mm -hmm. uh, it really has to be two in agreement. Yeah. Do you have anything that you want to no, I've add to that enough one? On that. Okay. So uh, enough said. I mean, I think that's obvious. But I'm looking forward to hearing comments from from other people about. The importance of the of two or three. Yes, be thinking about what you might want to offer to, and as we discuss yeah. this, as we go through this. I mean, we'll be done shortly. I mean, one of the things that's just it's just hard to get away from is the thought of, you know, kind of excusing myself. Well, we're sorry, we've only got a few people on the prayer call today. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever the, the prayer call is. Well, we should just be happy. I'm gonna that we try to hop over that we've so got I'm not. Yeah, you know, try to move together so we can. Okay. That's good. I, we apologize. This is we're not in our usual place, obviously. So, um, <laughs> so let's go on to number four, which is the symphony of decrees. So, do you want to? Is there something that you want to say on this one? I, I like the 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 thing about where you start with to build agreement and agreement and agreement, and then suddenly the declaration comes. And uh, we just went through that this last week on the eleven eleven. 11 uh, initiative that we did on Friday. One person brought the issue to me. We pulled in another person. There was agreement. We pulled in a few more. There was agreement. And then we did the thing. And it, ugh, I'm still shaking from that time. I don't know if anybody else was on that call last Friday, but there has been results. Yeah. From it. I, I won't go into it. But. Well, the thing about about um, making decrees, you know, petitioning, asking God for things is very important, and He calls us to do that. But when you decree or when you're decreeing something, it's very powerful because you are you are believing that you have heaven's mandate on on something, or maybe you're decreeing a scripture, which is God's word, and um, and it's powerful because it's. Uh, um, it, it is expressing the authority of the ecclesia mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, declaring something out loud, as opposed to thinking a prayer, that's, um, that's been a huge revelation for me to, to declare it and to declare it with other people and having them come into agreement. So the symphony of generations, I, this is just fairly simple for me. Family is really important for all of us and it has been for us, but, um, uh, what I liked about it is that uh, a family can be an ecclesia, but um, uh, we uh, an ecclesia is also formed of families. 
and the thought that is exactly how we're trying to build the watch you each uniquely represent a family a, a community around you and um we are building together and that's how this thing is going to grow is that if your own root system be, begins to develop the sense of community of ecclesia of trust of honor of uh, of deep revelation and sharing that's how this thing is going to grow yeah and that's how nehemiah built his wall right well in fact the global watch is a family, family. of families. families yeah and in our and then there's our own biological nuclear family of which there's an ecclesia because all it takes is two or three so susan and i are are an ecclesia in the rao family and then we have our children who make a, who make up their own ecclesia with their spouses with us too and then with us yeah it's very powerful and then because this is the symphony of generations it's very powerful to have the generations coming together mm -hmm. in agreement mm -hmm. the uh, older generation with Susan and me and the younger generation with our kids and now our grandkids which is really which is very exciting mm -hmm. as they um as they are going to grow up and and come to know the lord so it's it's beginning to wheel the wheels within the wheel. It's kind of like the wheels within the wheel of Ezekiel. Um, that that's that we've got a biblical model here, and we're beginning to express it. Um, and it's all I can say is I I feel like it's working. Yeah. <laughs> and and so let's go on to number six, the symphony of contending. Um, you want to say something about this? You can. You do. <clears throat> okay. Oh, well. He's talking about zeal, having zeal, and and that uh, it's okay to be emotional. Um, we don't want to er have everything based on emotions, but um, you know the Lord is emotional, and uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I th I think one of the things that um, that was very powerful to me was when he said on page two hundred, uh, your spiritual DNA is not only faith, as Abraham's seed was, nor the promise of atonement as Isaac's was, it's the contending spirit of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, meaning he who wrestles with God and prevails. So we have in our DNA, we have in our makeup as the ecclesia, that we are ones who are ready to contend, who are ready to fight, and that we will, you know, uh, Jacob fought all night long and wrestled with God and prevailed. And it's, it's very, um, it's part of who we are, and we are not ones who are called to give up we're not ones who are called to to relent if the if the um the battle's not won yet mm -hmm. we keep on wrestling and we keep on persevering mm -hmm. and part of the part of the blessing of the ecclesia is that we don't do this alone we do this with each other and so part of what we're called to do is we're constantly called to encourage each other lift one another up bless each other empower mm -hmm. one another mm -hmm. and this is just so vitally important Mm -hmm. um in prayer and this is why hey look this is why i love getting on these watch calls because i feel empowered and encouraged every time i get on yeah so it's good well, so well spoken mr all right. encouragement so that's my story and i'm sticking to it uh so let's hear from you all let us hear your comments we like to have about you know eight or ten people with your comments on any part of the chapter that you want um you, you can just raise your hand it just needs to be brief so that we can get as many people in as possible. So just to review quickly, the symphonies that he outlined were um, Symphony of Unity, Symphony, Symphony of Purity, Symphony of Decrees, Symphony of Generations, Symphony of Contending. Yeah. Okay. So the righteous are as bold as a lion. Who wants to go first? I can start us off, Greg. Um, I wanted to share that recently. I about a year ago, I started a face-to-face -face prayer, uh, joined the prayer time prayer meeting like thing, and um, and I and I felt so uncomfortable because they're just like a they're from the like a different perspective, sort of a different style or. And um, so often I wanted to quit, and I'm having conversation with the Lord about it, and it's like. You know, Lord, they're a different tribe, you know, and um, and anyway, I felt the Lord say, like, no, it's not true that um, 
the birds of the same feather flock together. Like it's that's not true for a prayer meeting. It's not. And 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 um, so, but we've always lived with a philosophy that different tribes and what what this is my tribe and that's your tribe and this is you know how I like church and this is how you like church and anyway. But I felt like the Lord was saying, no, I want you to come together. I want you to be in this. You know, um, even though they're different. Um, that I was to be, you know, with them, praying with them, and um, and and so in this um, in this chapter when he talks about the symphony of unity and he's saying that there would be different perspective within the same uh, prayer group. Um, I mean, they're so different. Like I couldn't even join in the beginning, but anyway. So I toughed it out, and I I totally love it right now. But so just wanted to share. That's that's called consistency. He talks about that too. That um, uh, our consistency really helps build uh, deepen the root system of the ecclesia. Yeah, and we're and, and we're all different, and there are different ways of praying for sure. But we're in in this group. We're trying to do. We're trying to be as re the whole reason why we're we're reading this book and studying this book and going through it. So we can all be on the same page about who the ecclesia is and what and what we're doing. And there are, you know, with the different kinds of prayer, there's different degrees of um, authority that we walk in. And I think it's really, I know you do, you all do too. It's really important to try to get a handle on that, try to get a biblical handle on how to walk in the, the authority that we're called to walk in. And a lot of people don't, they don't know that, or they don't have that. So that's, uh, you know, that's, a, that's, that is one aspect of praying with different prayer groups, for sure. All right, Michelle, thank you, Lena. You were very bold to be first. Michelle from Sydney. Oh, I just can't get away from um, the, the, the idea of the symphony. I'm just loving that because, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's musicians on this call that have an understanding of this much better than I do, but I love it because we're looking at the conductor and so there's not, you know, I'm reminded of that scripture that talks about they'll know we are Christians by our love for one another. And it's like, as we look to the conductor, we're not trying to be something we're not. We're not trying to play another's instrument. We're very content to be the flute or the, you know, the string section. And sometimes the string section will do a section together. And sometimes they'll be loud and sometimes they'll be soft and sometimes they'll sit out. And sometimes, sometimes they'll join me with the percussion session. You know, like I just love the whole, the picture of the symphony to me really helps. It's just a wonderful metaphor because he is, he's leading us. And as we are looking to him, we, I, I just feel like we will love one another. We will give room to one another. We will honor the differences and we will be humble with our own part because it's just a part. It's not the whole, it's a part of the part. So anyway, I just, I can't get away from the symphony, just that actual picture. And as I think about it, I just, and the sound of it and, and the beauty of, of different, you know, strings and percussion and wind instruments. I mean, it's just incredible, isn't it? When you think about how a symphony comes together and sometimes um, there'll be one part of the symphony that is called to, to be on the stage or in the forefront at that time. And sometimes the whole lot will come together. And I, I think there's so much in that anyway. So I, I'm just really taken by that picture. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's an amazing metaphor. And of course, if you've ever actually been to a symphony and, and heard it, you know, it's, it, it really is incredible. And, and exactly what, he's, what you're just saying is true. So that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. All right, um, Hillary, go ahead. Hey, um, I love I love what was just shared. I guess many times I felt quite intimidated because the Lord tends to call me in the smaller twos and threes. Occasionally there's the great big thing, but it's often with someone else who's actually taking the lead. And I love the fact that in an orchestra, you might have a lot of violins, a lot of cellos, and maybe just one or two flutes. And that's just as the, it was ordered and meant to be. And, um, you know, the Lord says constantly, don't compare yourselves. And sometimes it's challenging and, you know, very negative comments can come and can all this comparison thing happen. 
And I just feel like there's a, an empowering and a strengthening going on in my spirit. And I just want to say thank you, because this is really encouraging and it's the truth and it's the way you know even in the bird and animal kingdom and just so many different ways of looking at it when we look at God's creation it's so beautiful and it always works together wonderfully and when we try and put our man thing on it it makes a mess doesn't it yeah yeah it's yeah always a mess with the man thing in it <laughs> well and, and, and also you know it's just very encouraging and empowering to know that we don't have to have a huge group of people uh, mm. gathered together in order to be effective. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and yet we can enjoy each other and the different, the different instruments that we are in the symphony and, uh, and um, uh, understand that we're, we, we're, meant to, uh, we're meant to come together. We're not meant to be just by ourselves in a prayer closet. And uh, to me, that's one of the great continuing revelations. I just, I just love it. So, yes. And to Thank celebrate you. each other, you know, yeah, celebrating absolutely. each other is just so much fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank Tremendous. you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Hillary. All right. Let us go to Miss Molly. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I'm just, um, like you said, Dr. Sue, that this will need more number of times to go through and to really chew in and get it that this chapter really requires it and i'm really um i'm very focused about like when you come when whatever prayer it is whether it's a single person praying or a whole group praying there's an intentionality about coming before the presence of god that there is something where we're coming before the king of kings and the lord of lords and he's come bringing us into this council that means there's something on his heart which we need to pursue intentionally and that seeking is very i think he hones that in very well in the symphony of contending so we don't come casually we come in purposefully we come in intentionally and that heart is shared i think the dynamics of that that the way he shared is been very very comforting to me to hear every sound, to hear the progression of the sounds and how we are coming in together. So I loved uh, what you also shared, Dr. Fred. If this really got me is that we have, and it's getting my, my prayer time this morning was about um, being the seed of Abraham and the covenant by faith, what we have. But he's added in, in this understanding that we have a spiritual DNA of faith, but we also have the atonement of Isaac but we also have the contending spirit of Jacob. So yeah. we get all the three in this together. So I, I just love that. I loved about the tears, uh, what he shared about the six different kinds of tears. Isn't yes. that interesting that uh, God actually keeps all the tears in a bottle? So maybe we'll all see the tears that he has preserved. In some senses, I think that they are God's tears because he says he weeps and yeah. he ask him for his tears. He gives us to them very graciously. Mm -hmm. That was one. And something that really opened my heart was, um, I, is um, that Israel had to be spiritually prepared to go to battle as they would approach the sanctuary. So as a nation, and as an army, they were in both the same function. And I was just, it just motivated me that right now we have our nations, we have our armies that are separate and we have the ecclesia that is separate and praying. So I felt that there was an encouragement. I felt by the Lord that we pray that we have ecclesia even in our armed forces so that they also understand the dynamics of going with God into a war and not go separately or the ecclesia praying separately. So these are just a few. Amen. 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 That's so good. Thank you. We're all a work in progress. <laughs> yep. yep. Let us go to Utah. Yeah, for me, the, the point of purity and holiness was really important um, to um, how I um, um, the, like the foundation that the foundation, uh, like a checkup for myself, that the foundation, my foundation is his first love, 
and um, and also that I walk um, in in alignment with his authority and with his order to really um, that the focus for myself, but also in the coming together is um, this love for me and and uh, and for one another, and then um, uh, only to focus what the Father shows us and uh, what He's saying, and only to do that. And that was um, the yeah for me the the one that this was really um, showing out. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Thank you, Yuta. <clears throat> so Kate. Good. Kate. Well, I, the symphony metaphor has been with me all week. Um, so I loved what the lady said first on um, about the different groups of instruments. But what came across is, yes, we have to be in harmony with all these instruments, but we have to be tuned up very, yeah. very intricately. And it's easy to get out of tune. If I'm going to play my guitar, I have to tune it up every time I come in. I, or if somebody knocks it, I have to retune it. And it's being aware that, that I like communion. You know, communion is wonderful, but you, we have to get our hearts right every time. And it, the same in the in, in the symphony the um it's just, that metaphor just really grabbed me and it it's often the one group will be dominant in a particular part of the symphony and we have to be quiet but we're still there supporting and we have to have our eyes on the conductor because it's the timing who's going to come in who's going to be emphatic who's going to be quiet so keeping my eye on the conductor. So that that's really was a very big one. But the the end bit about the um, I think it was the contending about the battering ram and and you know we pray fervently and we're building up our faith. And once we get to the point where we have that faith, then we can shout. But the shout is very quick, like the people going around um, Jericho. It's a very quick because we've got the key. We just turn it and go in, and sometimes we go into the shout too soon and so we're shouting and shouting and shouting but we're not getting anywhere because i'm talking about me now we haven't contended properly and i yeah. thought to me that's very important and i need i need some coaching in that or some guidance because I, I it's all very new this decreeing and declaring and all that so anyone who has um uh and YouTube that they can tell me about or is willing to do a face-to-face, -face, show me how do I get to that point where I know when we've contended and then I can shout. I don't mean just personally, but, you know, in a group. Because yeah. um, the prayer meetings in church are nothing like this. Yeah, Nothing yeah. like this. I don't have anybody around that, well, we're on the camera deck, and but I don't suppose we really do contending prayer a lot. Molly and, and Hillary, I'd like to... Um, I, you know, I duck them to bring them over here <laughs> and sit at their feet and learn how to do this. But um, yeah. it's just all so exciting. But this well, chapter reason... was, I could be here for a week, I think, you know, a week yeah, just yeah. amazing. Well, it's good stuff. Well, Kate, the reason why this is called the journey is because we're all on a journey together. <laughs> now, if we had the, if, if we had the, you know, if we had all the, all the right answers, uh, truthfully, we wouldn't need God. And so okay. we're, we're constantly seeking him. It's what causes us to seek him every day. <clears throat> and yet we're learning and we're growing together. So uh, <clears throat> no worries if you don't have it all together. Uh, nobody does uh, in the watch here. But, we're, but this is why we're, you know, we're, we're spurring one another. You know, Hebrews 10, 24. We're spurring one another on towards yes. love and good. Yes. This, is, this is so important that we do this. Uh, that yes. we don't get discouraged because we're, you know, we only know in part and we prophesy in part. So anyways, yep. Great comments. Thank you so much. All right. Miss Shoshana. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, no, <laughs> sorry. Um, yes. Um, everything struck me what you said, even um very much and but one point um even the lord yesterday talked to me very very deeply and heartbreaking and this was uh, the point of authentic being authentic and 
um, as a as an ecclesia too. And um, I like this verse to be fast in forgiveness and in love, but at the same time to create a place for security and that we all together are responsible to, um, with an attitude coming together in prayer to create a place of security. And I really want to th say thank you to you and to Fred and Sue, especially um, because you are creating a um, place of security, even on Zoom. And this is amazing for me. So this is really uh, great because when you have this place of security, then people can develop their giftings and then they can grow. And even all the inner parts of us can grow. Everything God has given us and there is healing even, you know, if, if there's a place of security, even traumatized people um, can be healed and can be secure and can be in safety and can develop. Um, because otherwise those people draw out of communities. Yeah. But if there's a place of security, traumatized people can grow and can feel yeah. safe and, and can develop. And this is also part of symphony because if the focus is is really on, on Yeshua and how he is or what Jutta said on the father, really to listen what is on the father's heart and um, what is his aim. And his aim is always love and yeah. to get all the people in his kingdom. Yeah. Well, um, Shoshana, I just want to thank you for saying that. And I, it's just so encouraging for me to hear that because that has been our aim is to, um, I see it like a boxing pen where people can land and we can box and can contend, but it's got a solid ground and it's got boundaries. And um, that's, we've really contended long and hard for that. And um, I know the Lord has spoken deeply to our hearts about that and uh, just making it a safe place for people. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shoshana. Yeah, thank Great you. comment. Gail? Hi. Okay, so we'll lower my hand. There we go. And I was so glad to see point number two, the symphony of purity. Um, decades ago, I was in a, a, a congregational meeting and the pastor had a word from the Lord. And the word was that we were to pray for honesty, integrity, and purity. I understood honesty. I understood integrity, but I didn't have a clue as to what purity meant. And it took me a long time to understand, even as the culture started to become more and more impure, that helped me to see what purity meant. It doesn't mean perfection. It, it means really just dealing with my own issues and letting God deal with my heart and becoming more and more like him. But what was interesting about the word that the Lord gave, and he said that we should pray for honesty, integrity, and purity, he followed that by saying, you can't do that on your own. You can't make this happen in yourself. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I am God and I can do all things mm -hmm. and I will bring this about in you. And I was at a very low point in my life at that point, at that time. And this was a turning point for me. In fact, I, that, that, this was set back in the 19, early 80s or mid 80s or something. I still have the tape from that. I, I got the tape uh, and, I, and I still have it. And I, I would play it every so often just to remind myself of that prophecy. And so I haven't seen many people talk about purity. I, I've heard many sermons about honesty and integrity but people don't seem to want to go there <laughs> with purity and so the message is that we can't do any of that in ourselves but god can bring it no matter how far we feel that we're fur away from that whatever that is whether it's honesty integrity or purity I, I just say tonight god says to you to us to me again you can't do it in yourself but i can do all things and i will bring that yeah. about in your life. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Well, so good. Gail, I, I just want to reiterate <laughs> that we can't do it in our uh, of ourselves. And I, I'm going to just, 
emphasize something that I, I've recently been uh, called to do in dealing with difficult issues is getting before the Lord and saying, God, I need to be right before you. How do I handle this? Because mm -hmm. if I handle it in my flesh, it's going to be a mess. And it it can quickly become tit for tat, and you everybody's been in those situations. That's that that's a signal to get out of it and get before the Lord and have him make your heart right, get the biblical precedents for what you need to do, and then you have solid food to stand on. And and believe me, he can do greater, exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever think or imagine when you get yourself into that place. I, I just want to say how God said it because I'm remembering it as you're speaking. And he said, you say that you cannot do this in yourself. Yeah. And I say, yes, you can. I can do it in you. You can't do it in yourself. And you say, no, it cannot be. And I say, yes, it can be. And it will be mm. because I will do it in you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gail. All right, let's go to Marguerite, and then we're going to have a couple of people uh, pray before the end of the hour here. So go ahead, Marguerite. Got two pa pages up because um, my video wouldn't come on, so I thought I'm not giving in. I'm going to grab my cam my my phone as well. So if awesome. I put it on, it'll make a noise. So I'm talking a, through the video. You have a double. Um, you see, you have a double portion. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, I thought that. I tried to put my hand up last week, but I couldn't work out how to do it, and I finally worked it today, so I had two hands up for her. Um, it really hit me when you were sharing about the two to three bit. It really encouraged me, because we're in a small intercessor group at church. There's a bigger group that meets once a fortnight in the evenings, but there's a smaller group that meets at lunchtime uh, fortnightly, and it's a small group. It's about two, three it's about three or four or five of us. And we've got that unity. Okay. It, it's really, really coming. The pastor, she came in one day to join us and she said, you guys are working together. You've got unity. We're shouting. We're sharing verses. God gives me a verse. I'll share it. Someone else will pick up on something else. And, and we're on the same page. So it really encouraged me that I've been frustrating trying to get this book. I finally got the paper copy copy coming because kindle copy you can't underline it properly you can't look it up you can't share it so well <laughs> i'll have one next week of a paper copy as well as the kindle but um i like that two to three and i like that bit where you said it was most liberating for us and dangerous for the enemy we yeah. have authority in small groups and i'm, yeah. I'm going to share that on wednesday when we meet again because i think that will encourage us all i share little bits from this in different oh, yeah. groups that i Oh but, yeah, the, um, the part about two or three, it's very encouraging. It's extremely encouraging. Well, I had to oh, laugh. I, I, at the I can part shout. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to really reiterate on that. And the other bit that really struck me today when you were sharing is the safe landing place. Amen. The, the two or three and the unity and, and all of that. It's a safe landing place. I love it. Yeah. Well, I, I had to laugh at that, Marguerite, because he, uh, there's a point where and he, he really relates to the the church prayer group where you only get a few people and you're always you're reaching out and thinking it should be more and you, you're discouraged and disgusted. Uh, you know, what if? And I thought, man, you nailed our my thinking all the time almost because it's we we keep reaching out, reaching out. And if you show up and I'm like, uh, yeah, is it ever going to get? any larger <laughs> um yeah and the night one i haven't gone to so much lately because um yeah. i didn't like going out at night especially you know in the winter but i went to the last couple one and it was so powerful well i've got the shouting going there too we've got the unity going it's good i just want to encourage everybody to keep going the twos and threes the small groups that's what god is doing the new big is small so yeah Okay, so we're going to um, we're gonna we're gonna sneak Joe in for a quick last word, and then we're gonna go to. Uh, I think I see Jenny Hager on the line. <laughs> yeah. How do I put my hand down? I can't work it out. The same way you put it up. <laughs> no, I 
We got, it, we, got it, we got it for you. We got it. It's all good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Give us a quick one. Okay. Right? Yes, yeah, very track. quick. Yeah, very quick. You know, when we had that very, very first conference and it was online because everybody had to be online, um, that that really um, where, is where I really learned about the synergy and how um, unity uh, in small groups, you can get, as long as you're in unity, it's far better than a big group and you're out of unity. And so I'm, I'm really um, encouraged. And Marguerite, uh, I, we also have trying to get big prayer meetings in our church, but it's the small ones that seem to really get things done. So that's what I just wanted to say. And I just will never forget that um, illustration with the with the balls um, being put at different speeds, and then they all ended up being in yeah. the same harmony. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very powerful. Thank you, Joe. All right, so let us go to um, let us go to Jenny Hager, who is disguised as Jennifer's iPhone. Yes. <laughs> And Jenny, maybe you can maybe you can start us off in prayer. I'm and on us. my iPhone. Yes, yes. Yeah. There are power problems. Um, oh. Yeah, we've had a mini cyclone and we haven't had power for three days. Uh, and lots of things are happening here. It's one enormous spiritual battle. But um um just in closing can i just say that when you have a prayer meeting of two or three you've always got to add one because jesus said when two or three are gathered together in my name there i am in the, their midst yeah. so there's always the three plus jesus himself you know he 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 loves the number of two or three so um can you hear me? You're distorted. You can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're a little bit. Oh, uh, good. It's a little bit fuzzy, but go ahead. Don't worry. So, Father, uh, we just need to so much, Lord God, for this Actually, Jenny, Jenny, why don't you, uh, chapter. Jenny, why don't you? Why don't you, Jenny, why don't you turn well, otherwise off? Otherwise, you might have to ask somebody else to close in prayer. Okay. Why don't you turn off your video? We could probably hear you better. Probably. Oh, dear. I think she's. I think she turned off. I think she turned off, off everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Where should we I think go somebody here? has something to uh, pray. pray in. She's, so. she's back again. Okay. Jenny. You just need to put your microphone on again. Yeah. Jenny, just unmute yourself, but don't don't open yeah. the video. Yeah, so you can hear me now. A little bit better. All right. So, Father, we, we thank you so much for this wonderful chapter, which, uh, Lord, has been written by Dean out of his heart of intercession. Father, we can tell that he is an intercessor. So we thank you for all the encouragement that you've given Papa in this chapter. And Lord, for uh, all that you're speaking to us through this book, Lord, as you are um, giving us a wealth of understanding, Father, as you're strengthening us, as you're teaching us, as you're guiding us. Father, we bless you and we thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, let's go to um, uh, Margaret. Would you, Margaret Greck, would you help us pray into this, please? As the as the Lord leads you, I think you know. As we as we're praying, we just um, we just so need to uh, incorporate all of these things that we're that we're learning about, and uh, and we can't do any of it without the Lord. So we just need his help, but I, I believe he's going to help us. So go ahead, Margaret, as the Lord leads you. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, you are the conductor, amazing conductor of this symphony of prayer, Lord God. And we want to thank you for that. And what on my heart is to pray 
for all those leading small groups and those that are leading bigger groups to be so enthused so much in you that they will be able to conduct in a likewise manner so that these small groups are God will be like small lights all over the the world, Lord God, that are so impactful, Father. And to pray with zeal, this is what really struck me, as if it is our own family that is being hurt, and really to pray, pray with passion. Father, we want to thank you for this chapter for Dean Briggs. We want to thank you, Father, for this uh, uh, Global Watch for Sue and Fred. We bless you and we thank you, Lord God. And um, I just put in, in there, Joshua 23.10 and Deuteronomy 32.30. One can put uh, a thousand to fight, uh, but two can put 10,000. So, Father, small groups, as we pray in you, as we pray according to your will, as we contend and we learn how to contend in unity and in purity, very well said, and it really struck my heart, Lord God, because it is that which gives us authority, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we will not bow down to the enemy, but we will contend. We will continue contending, Father, until we see a breakthrough, because this is what you called us to do. You called us to have dominion, to possess the gates of the enemy. So, Father, we ask you, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will cause us, this is the way that the word says, cause us to pray according to your will and your purposes, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. And we thank you that we are one in you. You will make us one in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. <clears throat> uh, Lena, can you just unmute yourself and just pray into this as well, please? Um, sorry, Fred, it was, it was what? Just to pray into this session. Just to pray into, to just to pray up. into this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Father, we are so grateful. Lord, we agree. You have given us weapons. You have, you have given us the authority, the mantle, Lord, that you have positioned us and called us your counsel, Father, that you brought us before your throne and, and um, you are train, training our hands for battle. Um, and um, yeah, um, it doesn't take a, a large army, Lord. You taught us again and again. Um, it is um, it is those that you have assigned and those that you um, are calling um, that with partnership with you, Holy Spirit, always our eyes on you, um, that we will see the victory. We will see your purposes unfold as long as we keep our eyes on you. Um, and that we are walking with you in this partnership with you um, and, and staying together as a family, Lord. We will see, uh, we will see it through. We will see your purposes, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for sharing your glory with us. Thank you for seating us in heavenly places with you, Lord. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I want to just uh, remind people that um, we, um, Monday at 3 p.m. Jerusalem time, we're going to have a special watch. The family watch is going to join us with um, Israel, Shakar from Israel. We're going to be addressing the Ten Commandment issues that are going on with the global, um, the uh, COP27 climate summit happening in Egypt right now. Um, I would like to propose to all of us that we spend one more week on this and that we all take the, the, the six points from this chapter and pray into it, work it through uh, the reality and what our prayer lives are like and how we're engaging with people. Because I think this is laying foundations for, uh, you know, uh, deepening the core values of the, the global watch, helping people understand how we function together as a global watch. Is that, is that, is that even possible? And the Lord says, yes, because he said so. 
in the in the scriptures. It is possible. Uh, Isaiah 52, 8, Isaiah 62, uh, um, 6 and 7. So it those are very important issues. And I we might say a little bit more about that next week, but um how does that sound to you guys? Everybody's muted. I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to be bored with it. <laughs> I what? Wonderful. Yes. You've already agreed. I, oh. I okay. agree. I agree. It'll be great. All right. Uh, uh, let's all agree that we're a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and be teachable <laughs> going into it and allow God to work deeper in this because this is really solid ground to help the, the root system grow uh, in the in the global watch. So and help us all be more effectual in our posts. So amen. Amen. Maybe we could have um uh Allison from Australia. I don't know how your connections are if you like uh she can close us off. Yeah if you can close us off in prayer um and just uh just just you know pray into this as the Lord leads you. Oh Father God we love you so much and we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you never leave us or forsake us and that you teach us in the way that we should go. We thank you for your words, Father. They are life to us, to every part of our spirit, soul and body, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are taking us through each step and as we go, Father, you cause us to become more and more focused with you and on you. And we just thank you for the time that you take, Holy Spirit, to um, nurture us on the way through. Lord, you are so precious and we can't really express how precious you are in our language, but we all together love you so much and we want to thank you together for what you've done and what you are doing and what is still to come we thank you for each other we thank you for this great book and um and the fact that we are able to meet like we do lord we just give you all the praise and all the glory you are the most wonderful most holy and, and fearsome God in great might and power. And we thank you for you, Lord Jesus, we thank you. So we bless one another with your peace. And we thank you, Lord, that um, we are going from strength to strength and that we do have hearts to follow and to obey. And so thank you again for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, amen, amen. everybody. Amen. Amen. Wave to each other. Amen. Amen. Amen.